So mythology needs to be seen for what it is, which is a metaphor for our human existence. It's not a history lesson. It's a metaphor for life and for universal experiences. A lot of people read the myths and they say, well, that refers to something historical, the creation of the world or something like that. But Joe didn't think that. He thought that it's really uh, a narrative about the psyche, what Jung called the self. The problem is that many of us are metaphorically impaired. We don't realize that this thing that they're talking about is actually a metaphor for a transformation process. Just kind of like the Holy Grail, where it's not the thing, it's not the actual concrete grail. It's an intangible thing, but the Holy Grail is a metaphor for that intangible feeling. And so if you look at a book and it says, you will go to heaven, and you don't realize that they're talking about heaven on earth, heaven in our bodies, heaven right now in the now, you might fall into a trance of thinking that you're literally going to go someplace else if you follow the rules. Having been brought up in a mythical culture, I was very familiar with the different motifs and themes that were encapsulated in say, a mythical being, whether it was the Lord Shiva or Ganesh or a goddess. Just thinking the name of that person, the whole story was evoked. Carl Jung called these archetypes. Archetypes are primordial, encapsulated stories or mythologies, and they're in this form of a seed in consciousness. When you plant that seed in consciousness, that archetypal seed, that mythical journey, then that seed starts to sprout. And as it sprouts, the patterning forces create the situations, circumstances, events, and relationships for the unfolding of the story. It's better to have a story to look through at life than an explanation. The reason for that is the story is richer. I say select two or three heroes and heroines, either in mythology or religion or history, and then ask these mythical beings to incarnate through you. And then don't be surprised when you see situations, circumstances, coincidences, synchronicities, relationships, um, show, suddenly show up that actually are part of the story that you have been seeking to express. Once upon a time in the forest, there was this little tiger cub amongst a flock of sheep. And he ate grass, and he wandered around with the sheep. And when he tried to say anything, all that came out was a sort of little meow, not much of a roar. And one day, through the forest, comes a large male tiger. And he's just about to pounce on the sheep and he sees this tiger cub. And he says, what are you doing here? And the tiger cub goes, bah. He Picks the tiger cub up by the scruff of the neck and he carries him over to a pond and he puts his face over and he says, look, see that face? You're not a sheep, you're a tiger. The male tiger says, okay, we need to do something. slays a sheep and he grabs a big hunk of raw meat and he shoves it in the little tiger's mouth. And the little tiger gagged on it as all do on the truth. But it went down. 
And he got a little bit of energy and pretty soon he had a bigger tiger roar. And eventually he had a full tiger roar and he went off with the male tiger. I think the moral here is self-evident. If you're a tiger living among sheep, you're a pretty poor specimen of a tiger. Um, and we are all tigers living among sheep. We are all individuals with an, a self that we don't even begin to understand. And unfortunately, if you can open the metaphor out, the food we get from the culture around us is maybe food for sheep. It's not food for tigers.